Are you tired of tediously hand watering your potted plants? Going to each pot one by one and trying to make sure each one gets enough but not too much water? If so, I'm gonna walk you through step by step the setup and install of an automatic drip irrigation system for container gardening. Containers in this case can be anything from a small potted plant to a large grow bag. You'll be surprised at how easily it all goes together and how few parts are actually required. The time saved alone from hand watering makes this an easy decision. Today, we're just doing a small setup here on a patio. Due to the size, we're just gonna use our standard drip irrigation kit for container gardening. The kit I'm using today can handle up to 10 containers that are no more than 30 feet away from the hose bib. If your container garden is much larger, we have kits that can support anything from a small patio to a large deck or even a greenhouse. Our kits are easily modifiable. So let's say you have 12 or 15 containers. You could use just a very lightly modified version of the container kit. And after watching this video, you'll know which modifications to make. Let's take a look at our supplies. Here's our main line tubing. This will feed little branches, go down to button drippers that will be in each container. Our timer. This can completely automate the entire system. Just a small hose timer that you can thread right onto your spigot. This goes in the head assembly. This doesn't come in the kit, but we have a lot of hose timers available if you want one to automate your system. Everything else we need for the system is in this bag. Let's take a look at some of the stuff we have in here. Here's our back filter in there. This is one of the most important parts of an irrigation system. It goes in the head assembly and it keeps water from the irrigation system from potentially flowing back into the water supply. Canister filter. This prevents any contaminants from getting in the system and potentially causing clogs in our emitters. Our pressure regulator. This pressure regulator mainly maintains downstream pressure at 25 PSI. 25 PSI is the optimal pressure rating for the button drippers we'll be using today. This is our hose by tubing adapter. And this goes on the end of the pressure regulator on this end. And our mainline quarter inch tubing will go on this barb. And that's all it takes to get your mainline connected to your water source. Here's our button drippers. These are the parts that will actually deliver water directly to the plants. Here we have one of the most common pieces in any irrigation system, a coupling. This here is a one quarter inch coupling that you can use to join sections of your one quarter inch main line together. This is a one quarter inch T. You use these anywhere you want to branch your quarter inch main line in two different directions. We'll be using quite a few of these today because we'll get to one pot, create a T so that the tubing can get to the pot and the main line tubing can continue on to the next pot. Elbow fittings are used when you want to turn your main line 90 degrees. Helps it keep a neat appearance. For the most part, quarter inch tubing is flexible enough to take gentle turns and bends by itself. If you bend the tubing too sharp you could get a kink in it. This is called the Antelco Tidy Bow. It's kind of like an elbow fitting, but it can really help provide a nice aesthetic in potted plants. Now I've got my one quarter inch tubing clamp with nail. These come in really handy if you want to secure your quarter inch tubing to a post, a deck, some patio support. The quarter inch tubing clamp with nail is not included in the kit by default because not everyone's going to need one. Next up here is a little rack of goof plugs. The goof plugs will be used to close up the end of our mainline tubing runs. Next item is called a stabilizer stake. It's meant to stabilize your quarter inch tubing and your button dripper. Put your quarter inch tubing in these slots here, put the pointy end down into your pot and have your button dripper held out of the soil. That is everything you need to build a complete system and automate it. I've brought my head assembly components over and now I'm gonna install them on this hose bib here. First, I'm gonna remove this hose because we're not gonna need that anymore. First up in the head assembly is our timer. If you're using a timer, it'll always be the first part that you put on to the hose bib. If you're not using a timer, the first part you'll put on is your backflow preventer. There's a reason we put parts in this order. The timer valve, the internal valve inside, is the only part of the head assembly that's rated for constant pressure. Since the tap will always be open, there will always be water pressure pushing against that timer valve. That's pressure the other parts can't handle. Next up is the backflow preventer. It keeps water from the irrigation system from potentially siphoning back into the potable water supply. Next up is our filter, and it stops contaminants from getting in the system, causing problems with the internal workings of the regulator, potentially the emitters on the system itself. And then finally, our regulator. Our regulator maintains downstream pressure at 25 PSI, which helps ensure our emitters drip evenly and uniformly across the system. Last in the head assembly is our hose by tubing adapter. And this part is just so we can connect our mainline tubing to the head assembly and thus the water source. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect our mainline tubing to our hose by tubing adapter. Then we're gonna run it down to the base of the patio here. And we're gonna take a T fitting that way we can split our mainline tubing and cover the pots on both sides of the patio. Now we'll take a little piece of tubing, connect it to the other side of the T, and I'm gonna run it over to this first pot where I'll cut it. We're gonna go ahead and install all the main line that comes up to the pots first. We do that so that afterwards we can clamp down the mainline tubing. Once our mainline tubing is clamped down, it can be a little bit harder to get leverage on it at awkward angles to push the tubing on the barb, so it's just easier to do it first. So 
So now we're at the last container that we're going to be irrigating. We have no reason for the main line to continue running. So we'll use an elbow to get our 90 degree to go up vertical. Now I'm going to clamp the main line tubing here against this post. So it stays laid out, makes it easier for me to visualize what we'll be doing here and makes it a little bit easier to work with when we start our laterals that go up. And we've got our main line ran on this side now, got our T's installed, got some clamps in place. We're going to do that on the other side for the containers there. Run our main line, put in our T's, connect our vertical tubing runs, clamp the main line tubing, and then we'll start putting drippers in plants. Now we've got all of our main line run, we're going to do our first container. It's a pretty big container, so we're going to do two drippers in this container, one on either side so that all sides of the plant's root zone receive water. Instead of using an elbow at the top of this container, I am going to go ahead and use the Antelco Tidy Bow Elbow. It's a little bit different than a barbed fitting. You don't have to push your tubing on over a barb or anything like that. You just bend your tubing into about the same shape as the Tidy Bow and then clip it in. Very handy because it's adjustable. I could pull my tubing through and it would lower the elbow. I could go reverse to pull it up higher. It makes it a little bit easier to use in a lot of applications than a barbed elbow. You'll still need the barbed elbow for those really sharp 90 degree turns, but the tidy bow elbow comes real handy for things like this. Now I'm going to cut into the tubing here so I can install another T. The T is going to be needed so we can get two drippers in here. All we're doing is we're splitting this line into two so that each one can have a dripper on the end. Now this length of tubing I just cut off there is what I'm going to use for our drippers. I'll cut this about in half. Each side will go on one side of the T and then a dripper in the end held in place by a stabilizer stake. And that's actually all there is to it. I'm going to put the button dripper in the end of those runs. I'm going to hold it in place with a stabilizer stake and this plant will receive about a gallon of water per hour, half a gallon from each one of these button drippers. Now that we've got the dripper in the end of our tubing, I'm going to position it so it's near the root of the plant. That's one of the things that makes drip irrigation so efficient compared to traditional methods. We're going to deliver water directly to the roots. I'm going to use this stabilizer stake to hold it in place so it stays there and so it doesn't fall into the soil where it could become clogged. Now we're going to put it right near the root of the plant. I'm going to position it so it doesn't drip on any of the foliage. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this dripper and put it by the roots on this side of the plant. There we go. Let's do a button dripper in this smaller one. Instead of using two button drippers, since this is a smaller plant, we're just going to use one button dripper. This dripper will drip at half a gallon per hour because this plant needs a little bit less water. Whereas the other plant has two button drippers, each at a half a gallon per hour, which adds up to one gallon per hour. This will allow us to keep the plants on the same zone and the same watering cycle. I'm going to use this vertical run of tubing we created from the T at the bottom. I'm going to cut it down here at about the level of the pot. I'm just going to use a standard quarter inch barb tubing yellow, which costs a little bit less than the tidy bow. We're going to cut our tubing at about the level of the pot. Now we're going to push the barb on the elbow into the end of our tubing. I'll push it in far enough that it's right next to the soil. Earlier we were discussing the modularity of drip irrigation. And I have the perfect opportunity to illustrate that here for you. We already have our main line ran down for all of our plants here. But we're going to add this little plant here where the main line has already been ran. It's easy. All I have to do is cut with my cutter, install this T fitting, and I can add that plant right in as if it always belonged there. So here I'm cutting in and now I'm just going to install my T here, run my vertical line so we can get a dripper into this container. Now I got the T in, I just reconnect the other side of my main line that I cut, and it's as if it was always meant to be. All right, we've got all of our main line tubing ran, our last T installed for our last drippers and stabilizer stakes. You'll notice I left a bit of the main line tubing open here at the end. This is because here in the very near future, we're going to expand and add a couple more containers here. So that means instead of an ending at a dripper, like the one did on the far end, remember we went up with an elbow, came into the dripper, and that serves as the end because there's no open end. On this end, we're going to have to do something about that open end. Luckily, it's easy. All I'm going to need to do is add this goof plug to the open end of the main line down there. All right, we've got our system completely installed. But there's one thing we want to do before we operate it for its first cycle. We want to do a system flush. The reason we do a system flush is to get any debris that got inside the tubing or the emitters while we're installing it. And some debris will probably always get in. It's almost impossible to avoid it. So you want to do a system flush to send that debris right out of the end. Remember where we put in our goof plug is an end cap. I'm going to temporarily remove that, turn on the water source, and let water come out of the end of that for just a few moments to get any debris out. Then we'll recap it and we'll do our first watering cycle. If you did end up with an end cap, you can pull out one of those drippers and use that as the exit point for a system flush. I'm going to use the timer to run a manual cycle to let it flush. I'm only going to run it for a few moments, not for an entire cycle, just long enough for debris in the system to get flushed out. We're going to run the system flush on both sides. On this side, it's where we remove the goof plug that serves as an end cap. 
On the other side, we're going to remove the dripper where the line ends over there. We've ran our brief flush. Now we're going to put the goof plug back in so that we can cap off that end. And we're going to go flush the other side. Our system flush is complete. We're going to put our dripper back on that we just removed, put it back in its stabilizer state, and do our first watering cycle. When you do your first watering cycle, walk the system. Check connections around fittings, around drippers for any potential leaks so you can fix them now. If everything is good, you can continue to water automatically without worry. If you do find any leaks, most of the time it will be around one of the fittings. And generally all you have to do is just give the tubing a push to get it on a little more securely over the barb. If it's a piece of damaged tubing, perhaps you accidentally nicked it with the cutter. You can just use the coupling, cut out the damaged section, put in the coupling and rejoin the undamaged sections together. If you're finding the leaks at your head assembly, just check your connections. Remember, it's best to finger tighten and then maybe another quarter to half turn after that. And that's it. You don't want to over tighten them because it can cause damage, especially to the female connection. The extra tension and stress can cause cracks. With hose threaded components like this, don't use tools or silicon tape. All right, our walk through the system is complete. The system is operating exactly as it should. As you can see with how all the parts go together, it's a very easy system and has a modular property that makes it easy to work with and even expand on in the future. If you're ready to get started with a drip irrigation system kit for your containers, but would like to make sure you get the right number of components, check out our video on designing a drip irrigation system right here. If you'd like to jump right in and get started, you can check out our container drip irrigation kits right here.